Hello and welcome to Marcy in the Middle of the Sphinx, part two. Marcy was far too scared to enter the dark tomb and begged Thoth to release her father. Perhaps there is something you can do for me. The sun god Ra has two magical eyes. One holds the power of the moon and the other the sun. Bring me his moon eye and I will free your father. Follow the horizon until you see a light shining through the stars. It will be Ra sailing his sunboat. Don't come back until you have his moon eye. With Thoth's words ringing in her ears, Marcy wandered through the desert towards the horizon. Suddenly, she saw what looked like a shooting star. It was getting bigger and bigger. Marcy had to act quickly. At the ship's helm, Marcy could see the god Ra. But first she would have to remain unnoticed by the boat's crew of gods. Anubis, the god of the afterlife. Isis, the god of nature and magic. And Bath, the goddess of cats. With Ra in sight, Marcy came up with a plan to get his eye. But as she readied herself for the jump, she realised she couldn't steal anybody else's eye. For all she knew, Ra was a very nice god. She bravely climbed down from the rigging and walked slowly up behind him. She was very small, so she had to clear her throat as she gave a big tug on his cape. Ra was intrigued by the little human who found her way onto his sunboat. He listened to her story before speaking. And thank you for your honesty. Thoth is always plotting to steal my moon eye. If Thoth were ever to get hold of it, he would become unspeakably powerful and plunge the world into evil. As a reward for your service, I will help you free your father. My boat will take us to the Sphinx. The goddess of the night sky, Nut, will show us the way by shining a path in the stars, said Ra. As Ra's ship reached the Sphinx, Anchor dropped down. Just before Marcy was, went to climb down, Ra knelt before her. Here, take my sun eye. Its light will guide you and cut through the darkest shadows. Good luck. Marcy was filled with excitement. Maybe she was a real brownstone after all. Sphinx loomed up ahead. As she approached, it spoke its riddle. I am bright when it is dark, and dark when it is bright. I am the shepherd of the night. Who am I? Marcy had never heard of a night shepherd before. What could it possibly mean? She thought and she thought some more, but she couldn't think of the answer. Then, she had a sudden idea. What was only at its brightest in the dark? The stars. And shepherds guide things, of course. The North Star. The Sphinx's mouth opened to a set of steps, and they led down into a deep, dark cave. Marcy trembled with fear, but she knew this was the only way to save her father. As she descended into the belly of the Sphinx, it got darker and darker. When Marcy finally found Arthur, he was too busy with the huge snake to hear her shouts. She didn't have time to think. She had to do something. With the eye of Ra lighting her way, she vaulted straight into the snake's mouth. In that moment, Arthur realised that Book would not help Marcy. She had already overcome her fear. He dropped it 
and they escaped together. Outside the Sphinx, a shadow figure was waiting for them, and an evil voice boomed. Where do you think you're going with that eye, little girl? We had a deal. Ra's eye is mine. Ra's tried to tell Thoth it was the wrong eye, but it was also too late. As he took the eye, it was a flash of white, and a crack of thunder, and then silence. All that was left of Thoth was a tiny bird and Ra's magic eye. Ra appeared and picked up his eye, placing the tiny bird on his shoulder. He would grow again and try to steal the moon eye, but for now he's harmless. Together they all climbed up onto Ra's sunboat and prepared for home. Nut guided the sunboat by shining the North Star as brightly as she could. When they were finally home, Marcy couldn't wait to tell her parents every single detail about her adventure in the land of Egypt. And when it was time for Marcy to go to sleep, for the first time, she did not feel scared at all. Marcy realised that no matter how scary the dark was, even if it was filled with monsters, she was more than brave enough to fight them. And I hope one day you too will be able to conquer your fears, no matter how big and scary or small and silly that fear is. The End